Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and by now you've probably already seen a whole bunch of videos on the Samsung Galaxy Fold. I've even made a couple myself. But now that it's been out for a few months, the hype's died down a little bit, and I've been carrying it around with me everywhere alongside my Pixel 4 XL, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a longer term review of the Galaxy Fold, and also talk about the Fold 2, with its rumored flip phone style like the new Motorola Razr. Although we'll come back to this in a minute. So the big question really, what is it actually like living with the Fold? Well, to be honest with you, it's both amazing and very frustrating. There's nothing cooler than opening it up and going from that tiny but super tall 4.6 inch screen on the front to the huge 7.3 inch squarish tablet screen on the inside. It definitely turns a few heads when you open it up on the tube or in a cafe. Okay, quick question guys, what did you get for Christmas? Socks, a gift card, maybe a bottle of something? Or maybe, if you were lucky, a subscription to Audible? If not, well, I'm sorry, you can't choose your family. But all is not lost, because I've teamed up with the lovely people at Audible who are very kindly sponsoring this video to give you guys a 30-day free trial, one audiobook, and two Audible originals absolutely free when you sign up at audible.com slash techchap, or text techchap to 500-500 if you're in the US. And as a member, you you can access a huge selection of audiobooks and original shows. Plus, you get one free audiobook and two Audible Originals free every single month. So I've actually just finished the new Jack Reacher by Lee Moon, which I definitely recommend. And I tell you what, it made the journey home for Christmas go a lot faster. So new year, new decade, why not give Audible a try? Lose yourself in a good story like His Dark Materials, or learn something new in The Body by Bill Bryson. All you have to do is click the link in the description or head on over to audible.com slash techchap or text techchap to 500-500 and get either of these titles or any audiobook you choose absolutely free. Do it now! I mean, I've reviewed a lot of tech this year, but without fail, this is what impresses the most people. Whenever I show them the new MacBook Pro 16 or talk about, I don't know, graphics cards or PCs or even like the Tesla Model 3, that's all well and good, but actually it's the Galaxy Fold that people just enjoy playing with and want to know more about. It's such a different experience to any other phone or tablet on the market. And while you may already have made your mind up about it, whether you love it, you hate it, or you know, you're waiting for the Gen 2 version, without question, it is an innovative product and you have to uh, you know, tip your hat to Samsung and other companies like Huawei and Royale for actually trying something a little bit different and you know, making this work. Yes, there's the Huawei Mate X, but that's only available in China right now, and LG's G8X, but really I think the Fold is the only one you might actually consider buying. The first time you hand it to someone to try out, they usually open and close it a few times, like a butterfly, and then they examine the crease in the middle. And the truth is, the crease is noticeable, more so on lighter backgrounds like, say, Google Maps, but you quickly forget about it and it doesn't really take away from the experience. And after a few months of using it, I haven't had any issues with the screen. And unlike the Huawei Mate X, which has uh, the screen on the outside, so even when it's closed, you still may scratch it in your pocket. Uh, although it may not look quite as nice or futuristic, the fact that the screen is inside like a book means that actually it's a lot more protected because this is a plastic rather than glass uh, screen. So I have actually already slightly scratched the outside screen, the small one, but it's not the end of the world. And actually this gap is a little bit smaller than it was on the original review devices. Uh, they improved it a little bit when they uh, fixed it. They also added these little screen caps at the top to stop debris getting into it. And as you probably know, they uh, put the screen protector, which is uh, actually part of the screen under the bezel. So you can't actually see it or more importantly, take it off. And actually, one perk of being an early adopter is that if you've already bought your Galaxy Fold or you bought it before the 31st of December 2019, then you can actually get a full screen replacement from Samsung. It's a one-time off, uh, one offer thing for $150. If you haven't bought it yet, then, well, you're probably going to have to shell out a fair bit more if you do break this. One thing I never get tired of doing is just closing it. The magnetic latch never becomes any less satisfying. It's like the modern equivalent of closing a flip phone. I definitely recommend putting a case on it though. Obviously it's a two grand phone, so you want to protect it. Uh, but actually this uh, sort of carbon fiber look one, although they tell me it's like Kevlar, but they can't use Kevlar because it actually costs money to use that name, uh, but it should actually help protect it. And obviously with uh, this being not the most durable phone in the world, I mean, we don't have any IP water resistance rating, it's got a plastic screen and you never know super long term what's gonna happen with this uh, folding mechanism, with this hinge. 
I put a case on it. It doesn't really take away too much from the overall aesthetic. Honestly, the colors aren't that interesting. I've got the black one here. I think the uh, lighter silver one's a little bit nicer. The only thing that does make it feel a bit less premium is the plasticky bezel around the screen and the camera cutout in the corner. It's not flush with the screen, so you can feel it. And also, I guess, just how small the screen is on the front. It doesn't exactly scream high end. Opened up, it is remarkably slim though, at just 6.9 millimeters. Although obviously when you close it, it more than doubles to 15.7 millimeters. So it is a thick phone and it's pretty heavy as well. But to be honest, as the YouTuber cliche goes, it feels good in the hand. It feels premium, almost like a fashion accessory rather than a phone. It's got a sort of a good weight to it, it's dense. And yes, while I wouldn't sort of start chucking it around or throwing in a backpack without a case on, I have actually dropped this a couple of times already, sort of from desk height onto the desk or onto a carpeted floor. Nothing crazy, but I've not done any damage to it so far. It does take a second to get used to actually holding it though. I end up using it like a Kindle or like an iPad mini most of the time. And you can just about open it one-handed if you dig your finger in and then flip it open. But unless you're just scrolling down a website or your Instagram feed, most of the time you want to use this thing two-handed. Now I tend to use face unlock to open the phone, uh, which works pretty well, although it doesn't have an IR sensor, so it's not as good in low light or at nighttime, unlike say the Pixel 4 or the new iPhone. But I do keep forgetting that there's actually also a fingerprint reader on the side here. I wish it did double as a power button, although with the lift to wake gesture enabled, then you don't really have to press the power button anyway. And it does come in handy if you're using uh, PayPal or sort of banking apps that require your fingerprint so you don't have to put your password in. But to be honest, most of the time I forget about it. So as I say, I end up using the face unlock or when it gets too dark, then just my pin. Specs wise, it's pretty much the same as the top end Note 10 Plus minus the S Pen with a Snapdragon 855, a whopping 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of UFS 3 storage. And along with 5G support, it ticks all the boxes really. This is a powerful phone slash tablet thing. So on paper, it's very powerful, but I have to say in practice using it every day, it doesn't feel that fast and responsive. And I think this largely comes down to uh, the software. We're running Android 9 here with Samsung's One UI, but it just doesn't feel that quick, even uh, enabling fast animations and going into the dev options and reducing the animation speed, all that good stuff. Most of the time it's fine, but sometimes it can trip over itself and just become a little bit sluggish. So playing with it is very cool, but using it as your main everyday phone, well, it takes a bit of getting used to, and I don't love it. Firstly, I can't wait for this to get Android 10 along with Samsung's One UI 2.0. I really wish I could swipe in from the edges I could do on my Pixel or OnePlus. Instead, I have to use the old nav keys or swipe up from the bottom to go back. You can adjust where the gestures or keys are, but it still requires a bit of thumb gymnastics if you're using it one-handed. Then we have the issue of the two screens, and I don't really feel that comfortable using either of them. The front screen is simply too small for anything other than checking notifications or having a quick look at Google Maps. And it's already a taller 21 by 9 aspect ratio. Then of course you have the main screen inside, which is lovely to look at with the dynamic AMOLED flex panel and HDR10 plus support. Although it's not the sharpest at 362 PPI compared to 498 on the Note 10 plus. But the bigger issue is I don't always need a screen this big. I find myself missing, well, a normal size phone screen. I know it seems kind of dumb to complain about having a tablet screen when you've bought the Galaxy Fold, which is all about folding into a tablet. I understand that. But it just sort of lacks that Goldilocks screen. The front's too small, the main one's too big. And for when you just want to browse Instagram quickly or not have everyone around you see what you're doing on your tablet screen in public, or you're getting a bit claustrophobic with the front screen, and then you're just like, ah, I'm not sure which one to use. The almost square aspect ratio is great for a lot of things. Browsing the web, scrolling through socials, playing games, but you get huge letterboxing when watching videos or movies. Turning it landscape helps things slightly, plus we have that big notch in the corner, which means either we get a chunk of the video cut out, or like Netflix, just a black bar running down one side. One of my biggest issues though is with Instagram stories. Fingers crossed we'll see an update at some point, but right now when you watch or share stories, a decent chunk gets chopped off at the top or the bottom. Obviously with the specs and the price of this thing, it's aimed at more pro users than your average consumer. And actually with a new update that's added Samsung's deck support, so you can use it a bit more like a desktop PC. Plus you can have up to three apps in split view for multitasking in tablet mode. Although it still feels a bit cramped and I've never actually used this beyond, well, right now for shooting this video. But they are a couple of nice to have productivity features. So yeah, I do have a couple of usability issues with it, but the good news is that battery life is actually very impressive. With normal use, I get to about 11 p.m. at night and still have around 35% of my battery left. Although if you're gaming on the tablet screen for hours on end, then you'll probably only get half a day. 
Less impressive though is the bundled 15 watt charger. It takes a good hour and 50 to fully charge. Although we do get wireless charging, which works when it's open or closed, as well as PowerShare, so you can top up other Qi wireless devices from it. And finally, we have to talk about the camera on this thing. We've got six different lenses. On the back, we've got the main lens, an ultra wide and a three times telephoto. Then we have two inner selfie cameras, although one is a depth sensor, and then one outer selfie. I really do like the Folds camera, and while the Pixel 4 can be sharp and more realistic, and the iPhone's HDR and video is better, the Fold is just a good all-rounder. Although sometimes I find the shutter speed can be a little bit slow sometimes, especially in lower light, so you can end up with blurry shots. One tip though, make sure the aspect ratio of the camera is set to 3x4 or 4x3 for portrait and landscape respectively. By default, the full aspect gives you the weird aspect ratio of the screen rather than the sensor. We also get live focus video, night mode, and the option to punch out a bit for slightly wider selfies. So with all that said, should you actually buy a Galaxy Fold? Well, for me, I think it's an incredibly cool device. I love showing it off and having a play with it now and then. But to be honest, I really don't like using it as my main everyday phone. There's just too many little frustrations. And don't forget, this costs the best part of 2,000 pounds. So right now, unless you have your heart absolutely set on it and you really want just to show off a little bit, I wouldn't really recommend the Galaxy Fold. Maybe if you can get a good deal on it, if the price drops a bit, and actually when they update the software to Android 10 and One UI 2.0, then actually, I think it would be worth considering, but for now, maybe give it a miss. It's a first gen device. But what about the Fold 2? Well, if these reports are to be believed, then it'll be more like the Motorola Razr, a taller flip phone rather than a tablet. If they made that with flagship 2020 specs, then it could be very cool, although I must admit, I'd prefer if they just improved the current design. I really do like the idea of having a tablet screen in my pocket, and I think if they could make the front screen a bit bigger, uh, perhaps change the uh, cutout, the core notch, to a hole punch design, add a high refresh rate screen, maybe make the bezel flush with it, and also perhaps just make it a little bit thinner and lighter, and also obviously with new software and a Snapdragon 865, then this would be a lot more tempting. I'm not really sure what the benefit would be of having a super tall flip phone is anymore. I mean, yes, you would fold in half, so it'd be nice and short, but I mean, this already fits in my pocket like this, so I don't know, what do you think? Vote in the poll at the top right and let me know if you wanna see a taller flip phone or a refined tablet version of the Fold like this. Thank you so much for watching guys. And I've put a link for the Fold in the description if you wanna check it out. And I'd love to hear what you make of it in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more from me. Once again, a big thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description or head on over to audible.com slash techchap or text techchap to 500, 500 and claim your free audiobook right now.